right, let's go on page 64 when we're done. So we are still looking at um, modeling. We've looked at a few things with very nice, pretty data where we could figure out if it was linear or quadratic or exponential or cubic or whatever um, by just looking at do we actually get a constant rate of change where the numbers worked out perfectly, we could write equations by hand, all that good kind of stuff. Then we looked at some data that wasn't so pretty, and we were just kind of looking for trends in the data. We've looked at um, scatter plots. We did that yesterday with our M&M &M data. Um, and then we also looked yesterday on the calculator at the residual plots to decide. So there's lots of different ways to decide which one is the best. And we're going to be talking about residuals some more today. Yesterday, when I went through the calculator stuff with you, that was kind of a little introduction to it and why the different things work and how to push the buttons. But we'll talk some more about that today. So we have, like I said, we've had a lot of opportunities to work through the different models. Um, the most important ones for us are linear, quadratic, and exponential. I will tell you on the assignment, there's one that's cubic, but you don't have to figure out that it's cubic. It says, write a cubic regression. And I liked the rest of the question, and I was afraid if I messed with the data, I'd make it worse and not better. So you just push cubic, and it's fine. Like, it's something you should be able to do as well. Um, they are frequently used in the real world. That's why... They are so popular for us. You'll be expected on the AP exam to determine which model is most appropriate given the set of data. So remember yesterday when we looked at our scatter plots and we thought, well, you know, that second one for a lot of you, it, or actually for all three of them, for some of you, they, um, they all looked exponential. Or that second one, it could have been exponential or it could have been quadratic. Like they can look very similar to each other, but which one is the most appropriate and why? And one of the things that we did talk about before when we were just looking at the data is that if you have something and the question is about area, then it's most likely going to be a quadratic thing. And that's what happened with our circles yesterday. Um, few strategies, and that's what we're talking about. Okay, so a quadratic and exponential curve can look similar. It's basically what I just said. So how do we tell if a quadratic model or exponential model would be a better fit for the data? For those students familiar with statistics, whether you're in AP stats or you're just familiar with statistics, you know, we could look at the value of R and R squared. Does that sound familiar to you? Yeah, the R value and the R squared value tell you a lot, okay? However, we are not doing that in this course, okay? We are looking at it from the residual standpoint, and R does not stand for residual, okay? So, sounds like it should, right, but it doesn't. Um, we are keeping it much simpler. That's a matter of opinion, I think, but whatever. We good? Okay. So this is just some reminders about some things we know about linear data, linear functions, and quadratic and exponential as well. So if I have linear, so for our linear model, we this right here does not, if I actually did my differences, they're not all exactly the same, right? Because this is more actual data type of thing. And so it reveals a relatively constant rate of change. So if you look at this, you're kind of adding the same thing each time, kind of in the ballpark of being the same, right? Um, for a quadratic model, the rates of change are increasing or decreasing at a relatively constant rate, okay? You can also look to see if it has a U-shaped pattern. So here we can see that we have nine, we go down to two and back up to eight, and it's kind of symmetric. Now, if it looks like that, then chances are pretty good it's quadratic. But if you don't see the U-shape, it doesn't mean that it's not. Like with our M&Ms yesterday, right? We didn't see a U, it was only like half of the U, or half of the parabola, really. Um, half of that, so um, that doesn't guarantee that it's not, right? And then exponential, val exponential model, your output values are roughly proportional. We kind of, it kind of looks like we are multiplying by two every time, two-ish. Right? Those are ways to look at those. We agree? Not new news, right? All righty, so let's talk about residuals and errors. Well, we've already talked about residuals. We have not talked about errors. Let's talk about residuals from this graph here. So if this line, this is our y hat line, this is our prediction, and then this is the actual data point. The residual is the actual minus the predicted, right? We've already done that. That's not new news. Do you agree with that? Okay. 
So, and that's what this says. When we create a model, we can use our model to, our model predicts values for the dependent variable. And remember that it's just a predicted value, okay? Just predicted. If we use the input value from a known data point to find a predicted output using our model, the difference between the actual and the predicted is the residual. That's what we just said. That's what we've done before, right? We go on to say the difference between the predicted and the actual is the error in the model. So what is the difference between those two? Mm -hmm. They get flipped around, right? And if you subtract something backwards, what's the only thing that changes? The sign. Because 5 minus 2 is 3, and 2 minus 5 is negative 3, right? So they are very different, and if you subtract backwards, you're going to get a wrong answer, right? So we have to come up with a way to remember this. So here they are together. Residual is actual minus predicted. Error is predicted minus actual. So we've got... Residual, actual, minus predicted, that would be like wrap. And error is predicted minus actual, EPA, that works. Even if you just remember wrap, residual, actual, minus predicted, then you can get the other one around correctly. Or, which one of these did we learn first? Wrap, okay, good, you already got it down. We learned residual first, right? What class is this? Recal, what kind? Math, it is math. AP, it is AP pre-cal. So in AP, you learned residual first, or you can remember wrap. Whatever works for you, I don't care. But you got to have a way in your mind to keep it straight on which way to subtract. You with me? Okay. All right, so then it says, what is a residual plot? Well, we looked at them yesterday, so we kind of know. We know, and this repeats this a little bit, but I kind of liked both of them, and I figured if we rewrote it multiple times, it might help. A residual value is a measure of how much regression curve vertically misses the data point. It's the difference there. So actual minus predicted is which one? Residual. All right, and then here's pictures of what we looked at yesterday on the calculator, right? We graphed our data points and we got a curvy, a curve that fit. And then we also looked at our residual plot here. So what happens with your residual plot is it's like taking this curve and it flattens out right here. And this is your y hat, whatever it happens to be. Okay. So all of these points, these points right here are the ones up here. And these points down here are these points down here. So you see how you just kind of flatten it out. And then this becomes your x-axis and we can look at these as y values. That's why they're positive and negative and they're your residuals, okay? Does that make sense to you? We good on that? All right. Now, the difference between the predicted and the actual values is the error, okay? Depending on the data set and context, it may be more appropriate to have an underestimate or overestimate. Predicted minus actual equals error. So your line of best fit is either, it's either going to be an overestimate or an underestimate for the majority of your data points. Um, then we says, notice that residual and error are very similar, often used synonymously. So when, depending on, I don't know, who you're talking to about statistics stuff or whatever, they could be used interchangeably, but they are different. And then it goes on to say, the sign of the error tells us if the prediction from the regression model is an overestimate or an underestimate. Which I think is funny because the sign of the um, the sign of the residual could tell you that too, depending on how you think of it. So I just thought that was kind of funny, so I left that in there. But we'll look at how we don't have to actually remember necessarily if it's an overestimate or an underestimate, if it's positive or negative, because that can be very confusing. All right, and I think most of us in the end may not remember where it's connected, but that's okay. We have another way to look at it. All right, any questions at this point? All right, go to your next piece of paper. This is going on page 64 also. All right. So a high school student is getting ready for a basketball season by getting extra practice before school. Each morning he records the number of practice shots he took and records how many he made. 
The table below represents his recordings. A says to find a linear regression curve. So let's go ahead and get our data put in the calculator. So get to the black screen, new, no. And then what am I going to add? List and spreadsheet number four. X Okay, everybody look up here real quick. So I've just typed in my last number, and that, that box is still live, right? If I go and try and do my residual right now, it's going to tell me there's an error, basically, that my lists are not the same size because it hasn't actually accepted that value yet because that happened to somebody yesterday, and we couldn't figure out why things weren't working for him. Um, so make sure after you hit your last thing that you either hit enter or arrow down or you get out of that cell so it actually accepts that number. All right, now we have actually looked at... Um, regressions a couple of different ways. We found them on this screen. We've also added another screen and then looked at the scatter plot and did all that stuff. Um, it doesn't really, I mean, it kind of matters for a few reasons, and we'll talk about those when we get there. But if I read the rest of this question, let's see what else it expects from me. I'm supposed to use it to find the error, and I want to know if it's overestimate or an underestimate. Do I need my residual plot for anything? I don't think that I do. And if I do, it's fine. It's not like I can't go back and do it, but I don't think I need to add all that other stuff. I think I can just find my regression on this screen right here and be fine. So let's do menu, four, one, linear regression, four, and then do all your button pushing. And there we go. And see, it gives us R squared and R, but we're not really worried about those. It also lists out your residuals if we didn't know that, but we don't need that. So look at that either. All right, so two different ways I can write this down. I can write down y hat equals negative 8.7010 plus 0.4168x. But my units or my variables here are actually m and t. So it's really m of t equals negative a hat negative 8.7010 plus 0.4168t. Make sure you're not mixing y with t or, you know, make sure it's really should be the second one. Would the first one be acceptable on the actual exam? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those, I don't have a good answer for that yet. That's why I want to make sure you understand what's really, really right. Maybe, but, you know, if I know more, I'll let you know. If I figure out more, I'll let you know. Okay, um, then we're going to use our model from part A to find the error at t equals 50. Okay, so if I want to do error, is it actual minus predicted or predicted minus actual? Okay, predicted minus actual. So I want m of 50 hat minus m of 50. Where am I going to get m of 50 hat from? The calculator. And am I going to type this back in and put a 50 in here? No. Where is this stored? F1. Okay, so here's the thing. Had we gone to um, graph our scatter plot like we did yesterday, you know how we went and show linear and it showed it to us and it gave us an equation? It was showing it to us. It did not store it anywhere. So if I had done it that way, I basically would have had to come back and do this so it would store it in F1. You with me on that? So that's why doing it this way, if you got, if you have to actually use the values, go ahead and do it this way. We may still need to go back and look at something else. It's fine. You don't have to write down any more than this. I kind of suggest that you don't, so you don't actually do something weird with, um, with decimals. So in order for me to find m hat of 50, can I do it on this screen? What do I need? Calculator. 
control, add a page, I want the calculator. So I'm going to do F1 of 50 minus, what is M of 50? 20. Okay. And then that is your error, negative 7.8604. All right, now, then it asks me, is the value predicted an overestimate or an underestimate of the actual value? When you are trying to figure that out, this is what I would do. Instead of trying to wrap your mind around which way did I subtract, where is it, is this an error or a residual? Even if this was a curve of some sort, I'd just say, okay, let's pretend like this is my predicted line, right? And let's pretend like this is my predicted point. So this predicted point, that is, um, do we know what it actually is from right here? Can we figure out what it actually is? Yeah, we didn't need to, but I think it would help us. So I can do F1 of 50, right? So it's 12 something. I don't even care about the exactness of it because they're far enough apart. So this is about 12, right? And then the actual number is what? 20. That means the point would be up here. So then, is my prediction an overestimate or an underestimate? Underestimate. Make sense? And I think this is what it means by the sign of the error. If the error is negative, it's an underestimate. If the error is positive, it's an overestimate. Um, and that's, a, that's opposite from residuals, but again, you can think about it oppositely. But if you start really trying to overanalyze that, that's when you get confused about everything, even though it's simple. What questions do we have? Perfect. All right, so then let's look at this one. The weight of newborn babies can be modeled by a linear function, so linear function, for the first four months after birth. Selected values for the weight W of T in kilograms of a particular newborn baby were given in the table above where T represents the number of months since birth. So T is months and W of T is kilograms. All right, we're going to use the regression capabilities on your calculator to find a linear model in this form for the weight. So let's do that. So I'm going to go back and get a new one. Add my data in spreadsheets. X so funny to listen to the sirens. You know, it sounds like y'all are racing to get the... Who's going to finish first? Okay, so I've said over and over and over again, we have to be correct to three decimal places unless it's stated otherwise, but we should write down four. Well, here, it only shows you two, but it's not because they don't fit. It's because there's literally only two, and here, there's literally only one. You do not add zeros to make it to three or four. If that's exactly what you get, that's exactly what you get. Make sense? Okay, so when we write this down, we're going to write down... W of T hat equals 3.34 plus 0.8 T. Then we're going to use the model found in part A to predict the weight of this baby 2.5 months after birth. So I want W of 2.5 
hat. Where do I get that? From the calculator. And I need the calculator page. So control, add a page, one for calculator. And then I want F1 of 2.5. And I get another nice pretty number. Five point three four what? Kg kilograms. So then it says the actual weight of the baby two point five months after birth was five point five kilograms. What is the residual for this weight? Did our model underestimate or overestimate the weight of this baby? Um, all right. So the residual, actual minus predicted or predicted minus actual. Actual minus predicted. So I want W of 2.5 minus W hat of 2.5. I have said a bazillion times, never, ever, ever type a rounded decimal back into your calculator, which I still think is a pretty good rule to go by so we don't mess anything up. However, in this case, would it be acceptable to actually just use this number that I got? Yes, and why is this one different? Because there's no other decimals. It was not estimated. That is literally everything the calculator gave me. So we could write down, if you wanted to, you don't have to, but 5.5 minus 5.34. Okay. And when you do that, you get 0.16, right? And then it asks, is it overestimate or underestimate? So I can draw myself a little line again. Okay, well, the actual one is right here. I'm sorry, my predicted one is right here, which was that 5.34. 5.5 is up here. So it looks like this is a what? Under, because you're looking at the line. The line is an underestimate for this particular case. Underestimate. That's bad. Everybody okay with that? Plus, if you have both numbers, I think you can reason through that as well, right? And you don't have to get fancy and remember which signs it is or whatever. What questions you got? All right, I'll flip it over. So using a residual, which is something that we discussed yesterday when we figured out how to plot all this stuff, to check an appropriateness of a model. So a residual plot shows all the residuals for a set of data and can be helped to determine if it's appropriate. If a model for a given set of data is appropriate, the residual plot should appear without pattern, right? The random one is the one that we want. We don't want the ones that make a cool pattern. If we see, if we can see a clear pattern, then the model for the regression was not appropriate. So I know that we looked at it, but I wanted you to have some examples down on paper here. So here is in a, quote, good residual plot, it should exhibit no clear pattern, should be random. And of course, the more data you have, the better it is, and the less you would see a pattern. These three down here are examples of bad ones because pattern equals bad regression models. So this one you can see kind of has a quadratic shape to it. This one kind of has a linear shape to it. This kind of has, what, like a chromosome shape to it? I don't know, but um, it's still a shape, whatever it is, okay? Um, just something that you can see a pattern with. Okay. We good with that? Understand the concept there, okay. So then it says, how do we know from a residual plot, not necessarily from our you know, actual graph. So remember, for the residual plot, this is, This is your y hat, whatever it is. I have no idea if this was linear, if it was quadratic, whatever it was. But that gets kind of laid down and it becomes your x-axis. So anything above it is a positive residual because then this like becomes your y-axis and you can go, so these are all positive residuals, these are all negative residuals. If it was like a line and stood back up, then these points above it would be over here and the points below it would be over here, right? So the predicted line will blank when the value is positive. So when the positive values are up here, that means the prediction will underestimate. The data. And when the residual value is negative, it overestimates. 
this, or it's an overestimate. Maybe you will just remember that. Highly unlikely. I have to think about it every time because I have way more important things I need to really store in my brain. Okay, we okay with all that? All right, so then it says, would example two be better modeled by a quadratic, should be say quadratic regression? I should have written this question way better and I put an S on there anyway. Um, for this, you know, for this particular child, because it does say, if we go back and look at that, it says that um, the weight of newborn babies can be a linear function. This is for one particular baby. So for this particular baby, what a quadratic, whoops, be better. So we are going to figure that out by looking at our residual models. We already have the information in our calculator, right? And we actually already have the regression, but that doesn't matter. It's good that I had it because I needed, the, needed this out of it. But I want to go and add, I want to look at my scatter plot. Because although we have all that, we don't know what it looks like when it's graphed. So we're going to do what we did yesterday. Control, add a page. This time we're adding data and statistics. You get this randomness. Then you got to put in your, your axes here. Bless you. So we basically want to compare the linear to the quadratic. So let's start off with the linear. Looks kind of linear to me. So I'm going to do menu. We're going to analyze. I can't do residual yet until I get a regression. Regression, and I want to show the linear, which is 2. And it gives me my same equation again. It's just that one doesn't store it. That looks pretty good for a linear regression, right? So menu, 4, residuals, show my residual plot. Hmm. Now what do you think? Yeah, not so good, right? It looks like a quadratic. And so I'm thinking I see a pattern. This is probably not the best one, right? But I don't know. Maybe, what if I get the same pattern or like a different other pattern with quadratic? So let's go look at that. So we're going to do, we're going to add another page. Control, add a page. Data and spreadsheet again. Fix these, which I know takes you longer because of this stupid little trackpad that I don't like. Get the same thing. This time we want to show quadratic. So menu, four, six, quadratic, which is four. Ooh, that looks pretty good for quadratic too, doesn't it? Then menu, four, seven, two. Does this look random? Looks way more random than the other one, right? So for this particular question with this particular data, would a quadratic be better? Yes. Okay, so let's go answer that question. So we're going to say yes. Example two would be better modeled. by a quadratic regression now some people have a hard time like knowing what to write number one have i actually explained anything yet no just because i wrote words doesn't mean i explained anything and where did i get those words Straight from the question, right? I pretty much just rewrote that. That's how I knew exactly what to write. I'm not embellishing. I'm not making up a story. I'm just, that's it, right? And so, yes, example two would be better modeled by a quadratic regression because, this is where the explanation comes in, the residual plot is random. And the linear residual plot oh. shows a clear pattern. Let's say shows a pattern. 
Everybody okay with that? What questions do you have? All right. So we still have a whole other page of notes, which won't take that long on Monday, but some other things I wanted to cover. But we're going to stop here for today. You can go ahead and put those in your ISN. And I'm going to give you your assignment that you can get started on.